plugin of the week is the Waves Abbey Road Reverb Plates. Uh, this is um, a, um, well, as of the video here, a very recent release by Waves, um, the Abbey Road Studios Plates. Now, back at Abbey Road Studios in, in the late 50s, 1957 to be exact, uh, Abbey Road purchased uh, four plate plugins from EMT based in Germany. And this was the same year that they released them to the public. Um, and so studios bought these things up. It was an alternative to reverb chambers, which was one of the only ways to create reverb. So reverb chambers were actually rooms with reflective surfaces. You would feed signal in through speakers, set up microphones, and it was difficult to kind of control some of the aspects of like reverb time and those sorts of things. Um, and it was all acoustic. And so there were some limitations and, uh, in terms of working with that. And with the plates, it gave um, new options for the ways to work. So Abbey Road purchased four of these plates labeled ABCD. I've seen the picture of the plate room uh, and the picture of the plate room, they're in reverse order. <laughs> so uh, A starts on the right and goes across, not that that matters. Uh, but the four plates uh, were emulated by waves and they've done an absolutely stunning incredibly ridiculously amazing job at it because in this emulation what they've gotten that i think is a bit missing in every other emulation that i've heard are the tonal characteristics and resonances of the piano and the way that they come through and also the shape and detail of the tail which is just incredible so when you actually go through and you work with or or set up the individual uh reverbs what you will find is that um, each one has a unique character, in a unique tone, and this is absolutely 100% true of the original plates. And I've been in many studios, world-class studios, and some of them will have two, three, four, or six plates. You go through them one by one, and they will all sound different. Some sound warmer, some sound richer and brighter. You can pick which one that you want, um, ideally. Uh, if you find a favorite one, you book it ahead of time. That's the way it worked, because all the studios would share those plates, and they would get patched into the control room that asked for it. So it would normally go to the mix rooms, uh, where you know it would be booked and used. And in, um, in starting to actually work with them, um, you know, you would set them up and you would just kind of go with it. So the, the reverb time that you would see here would be different for every plate at the same setting. And so that would be with the remote control in the control room. So the basic idea is the audio signal comes in to something that's akin to like a speaker driver attached to a metal plate, which resonates the plate. There are two pickups on either end, and they pick up those plate vibrations and convert it back into an audio signal, and that becomes the reverb that you hear. On the the basic thing here, when you have a plate, the only real control that is typically available to the engineer is the reverb time or the damper control. So there's a, um, a fiberglass uh, rigid panel which is mounted parallel to the plate, and what it does is when it gets closer to the plate, it makes the resonance less. It dampens down, so you have less reverb time. As it goes farther away, you get more reverb time. And it would typically give a range of about one to five or six seconds, somewhere in that range. And all plates would vary, some a little bit um, longer, some a little bit shorter. You'll, you'll hear that with some of the examples. The, um, the treble control emulation of this is actually from the electronics of the console that it returned on in Abbey Road Studios. So that's just an emulation of that EQ of 4K shelf. The bass cut is part of the original uh, high-pass filter electronics from um, uh, designed by EMT. So the uh, zero setting is no roll-off, and then there are three settings, um, which have different slopes that sort of start at 1K and end up at 10 hertz. That's the way that they measured it. And each um, step actually is progressively steeper. So a step three would roll off the most low end, but it's low end, but it's a relatively soft curve overall. And this would be something that would be attached in the plate electronics and not accessible in the control room by the engineer unless they knew about it and wanted it to be set a different way. Pre-delay was also something that's not part of the original unit. And typically, uh, if you wanted a pre-delay on the verb, you would send it through a tape machine, use the tape slap and, and take the output of the tape slap in. Uh, later on, it was used with digital delays and things like that. The drive control is unique. Now, this is overdriving the electronics, and I never remember really doing this. I never remember anybody else really doing this, overdriving the input into the plate, but I'm sure people did. And this emulates the overdrive 
of the input electronics would have tubes and transformers. Uh, it shows the um, the harmonic distortion, or uh, total harmonic distortion characteristics of the driver element feeding into the plate, the pickups, and then the output electronics that feed back to the console. So there's a lot going on in terms of the depth uh, and character of it. And then you have a wet dry control and the analog, if you turn this all the way up, gives you the um, gives you the plate's original hum and hiss, you know, that uh, noise basically that would be inherent or natural to the plate. So uh, the best way to go about this is to just go and start with some audio examples here. So um, what I have is like a simple plate verb here and I'll go through a few different options um, and uh, let's just kind of see what we got from here. So if I go through, I'm going to increase I can go through the different plate options so you can hear the different tone. Oh, I'm going to kill this compression, sorry, that will affect this tone, the sound. So you hear like each one has a really distinctive, unique character and and the, the sort of metallic quality and you hear the different resonances. It's so true of the original things because the plates are actually tuned. They're suspended by springs in a metal frame and they can actually be tuned, stretched a little bit more. The tighter they are, the more the resonance kind of holds, the less loose, they're, the more the warmer that they are. And that's why you have the the frequency controls here. So as you go through the different selections, you notice that the reverb time changes, also very true to the original. The crosstalk control is a unique thing. Um, if the original signal is on the left side, in the original unit would be mono in with a stereo out. So any signal would be fed in mono through a send. And then you would get the stereoness and the output, but it gives you no left-right imaging. And what Waves did here, which was really, really cool, is they basically have two plate engines. So the stereo in, stereo out version actually allows you to have real discrete separation. So if you have something pan hard to the left, it will only give you reverb on the left. And that's not true of the original unit. But if you take the crosstalk control and you swing it over to 100, then that same input signal, like for example, if I pan the snare over to the left, it will show up as reverb output on both sides. But if I go here, I'll only have reverb on that side. And that's really cool. So that's something that's different. And what it does is it allows the reverb, if you feed it in from a stereo source, like when I feed it in mono, setting this crosstalk is meaningless because the left and right signal are already exactly the same. So you're just feed, cross feeding it into the other side and it's exactly the same. Uh, so this really is a control that works with stereo in where you actually have some left rightness and this will help to move the reverb to move it a little more dense in the center or keep it spread open and wide and that's a really really powerful control so that's like um that's like an excellent way to you know to kind of look at that yes it's very low latency uh, and it's you know it's not a huge CPU hog considering the sound quality and everything that you get with. Now as you toggle through the damper settings, um, you have 11 settings from 0 to 10. So it's not in seconds. So this isn't 10 seconds. These are 10 different stepped settings. And as you toggle through each one, it gets progressively more reverb or downward less reverb time. So do you know how many people? And Reverb D, I think, is like the longest plate time. But you can hear that's a pretty broad range of different um, of different settings, and it gives you quite a lot of control. In the context of the mix, if you just start listening to it from this perspective, and let me just kind of...
And that gives you a pretty broad palette there. So now if you wanted to go with a warmer one, you could also go through some of the roll off settings. And if you wanted to warm up the top end, you could do here, it's a 4K shelf. And uh, it's really, you know, it's amazing when you start diving into it because you could hear just with the different settings how really radically different all of the different things. And with the bass cut and treble controls, how many different tonal characteristics that you can get with this. And this is without any pre-delay. Which starts to bring in like a whole other level of depth. And what do you think? I have no other effects on here, just to kind of... I made a really a tighter reverb here with plate C. which, you know, be a little bit more typical for like a, an up-tempo song like this to get the, the idea. But very, very powerful plugin. When you start putting this on vocals or, you know, if you have a ballad, you know, or something that's really open and you just like the lushness and the richness of it is just insane. Um, you just go crazy over it. This is like really, um, uh, this one really blew my mind uh, coming out and checking this out and definitely one um, if you haven't picked it up or demoed it, definitely do so right away because this one rocks. All right, there you have it. That's the uh, plugin of the week, and that is the uh, Waves Abbey Road Reverb Plates.